Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. Welcome. I have never seen a plugin like the one I want to talk about in this video <clears throat> so quickly overtake competition in the market. Um, Valhalla Vintage Verb is the reason why I do videos like this in this series, which is why is X thing? So why is everyone in love or whatever? Everyone is in love with this reverb. I see it constantly. Um, I used to not see it, and then it became the thing that everybody was using for vocals, for strings, for everything. So I had to understand why people loved this thing. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Um, we're going to start with an overview of the uh, experience, the user experience and the interface and what everything does. There's going to be some reverb theory. And then I want to finish with the pros and cons of this thing as I see them, my own personal opinion. Um, but I guess one, two headlines is I'm very impressed and happy with this. And I think that it sounds really, really awesome. The kind of headline for the downside is that I feel like Valhalla's adherence to the tone and character and behavior of the, you know, the gear on which this is kind of modeled is in itself a kind of weakness for reasons I'll, I'll get into a little bit later, but Let's actually just talk about this plugin. Let's listen to it and let's get into it. I'm going to put my headphones on. If I had a title sequence, it would go here, but I, I don't. So you're going to have to watch me do this. All right. Allergy season. Here we go. Okay. So this is Valhalla Vintage Verb and it is resizable. So I can just drag this out over here. And I think it's one of the better small looking plugins too. When you bring this thing all the way down. It does look very kind of nice and compact, but we're going to bring it out a little bit for folks at home watching this on their telephones for some reason. So what do you notice right away? Well, there's no graphical EQ interface. I, I can't move nodes around. There's no kind of little visuals or anything like that. It is all just potentiometers and circles. And it's almost as if the designers are daring you to just use your ears and move things around and you know, and decide whether you like or don't like what you hear. It's a really kind of stark um, user interface for a plugin in this day and age. But um, there's a lot of intentionality behind what's going on here. The first thing I'll say beyond the fact that it's resizable is that you have three different colors. Right now we're hanging out in the 70s. You might think these colors are emblematic of the 70s. That's because you actually get three different kind of reverb flavors in this one vintage verb. The 70s, which if I mouse over this, it'll say it's down sample, 10K uh, bandwidth, dark, noisier modulation. We get the 80s, the colors change. Um, and then we get the the now, which is uh, you can change this between darkness and lightness. I kind of prefer uh, things nice and dark there. Let's actually listen to all these different colors. Um, starting with the 70s, we are going to get a tighter, darker sound, in my opinion, a little noisy. And that's, as I understand it, emblematic of the kinds of verb units that were out there at the time. So this is 1970s. Let's go to the 80s now. Right away, we hear that difference, especially in the high end. We get that kind of fizz. It sounds like someone opened up a can of pop, like it's just like, which is kind of cool. So if you go to the 70s again, listen to the high end. <laughs> 80s. And then moving into now. So we have full bandwidth. It says bright, clean modulation. And indeed it is. If I bring up the decay time, we can really hear these differences in color. Again, starting with the 70s. 80s. And then now. So subtle, but different flavors, which is great. Um, let's start from the left to the right here with this plugin. So you'll notice before I do that though, as I mouse around, we get these little controls, little controls, little dialog boxes here. It tells you what pre-delay does, tell you what mix does, decay, damping, all that stuff. 
this is helpful, but it's especially helpful because Valhalla has decided not to produce any documentation for this plugin. They want everything to be in the UI, which we'll talk more about that later. So the mix knob. Right now I have this on an aux track and I'm sending um, sound source to it from the snare track. That's how you should set up all of your time-based effects for your, I don't care how powerful your uh, your CPU is and stuff like that. You should be setting up things like I just mentioned. And that's how I have it here. And that's why I have the mix parameter all the way at 100%. No dry signal is here. If I want, I can change it though. And one of the nice things is I can hit this and then this is grayed out. So now as I move between different presets, the mix uh, knob stays the same, right? That pot stays the same. So I can go back to my chamber, large chamber, and that's very kind of handy and helpful. So obviously I'll, we'll just do this zero mix. That's the sound of the snare. Mix at a hundred. Wonderful. We all know what a mix potentiometer does. Now we have pre-delay and this basically just sets up a delay in the decay. So it takes, you know, 10 milliseconds for the decay to kind of kick in. Um, we can have none. Or we can really exaggerate it. You might wonder why would we ever want to play with pre-delay? Well, de pre-delay is one of the, um, you know, parameters that really helps you uh, get some separation and possibly intelligibility from the sound source and the reverb. So you don't have the two kind of happening at the same time. So on a singer, you might want to increase the pre-delay time a little bit so that some of the articulation of the vowels and consonants can be heard before the reverb kind of envelops it. Um, and it can also be used as a creative effect. Again, you, you heard how staggered those snare hits were at 500 milliseconds, right? Versus this. So under here, we have our different modes. These are our reverb algorithms. I think there's 18 in total. Concert hall, we all know plate, room, chamber, all that stuff, nonlinear. Um, and then, you know, we can just kind of take it from there. I, I like to, I, I was trying to prep this demo and I thought chamber was kind of the best one to go through all the examples on. It's, uh, you know, one that's very familiar, I think, to us. So we can change the decay time here. And this is really, really interesting because look how generous the decay time is. We can go all the way to 70 seconds. That's almost like infinite reverb. It will decay eventually, but. That's insane. For reverse reverb or any kind of sound design stuff, this is pretty powerful. Most decays that I've seen, and by the way, as I move this, it's still interpreting audio through the plugin. So it is still getting audio and changing the decay time, which is kind of cool. If you maybe want to like record on another track, everything that you're doing um, and get some sound design stuff as you move the parameters around. Most decay times kind of max out on plugins, I think at around 20, 24, 25. The fact that this goes to 70 is really, really cool. Um, that was a bad spinal tap reference. So that's decay time. Now we go over to damping. So damping is going to alter the characteristic of the decay frequency wise, and we can change how, you know, they get affected sonically with these parameters here. So if I bring this all the way to zero dB, I'm not going to get any damping, any altering of the high frequency of the decay time of that reverb tail. But if I cut this off, this high shelf, and bring it down to minus 24 decibels, now listen. I'll bring it up. So we get that kind of fizziness here, and we can control the fizziness by just, you know, cutting it off. That's kind of interesting. I can go a little bit more extreme over here and bring this up to around, let's say, yeah, 8370. See how that sounds. So now we get a much more boxy sound, right? Because we're choking out those high frequencies in the reverb tail. 
Um, and this is maybe something you want to do. This is one way to control or manipulate frequencies. You could also do some EQ work or something like that. But damping, it's almost like you have absorptive materials on your walls such that you get less kind of reverb sound. It's being absorbed and sucked up by material in the room, which is kind of cool. Now, I've tried my best to really understand why I should be interested in the <laughs> damping the bass frequencies uh, and also the bass mult without documentation, it is really hard for me to understand what this thing is doing and why I need to care about it. But I, I assume that this was a big part of the vintage uh, reverb units, and that's why they have these controls here. But again, would really love some documentation to understand what this thing is doing, because these bullet points here controls the transition frequency at which the bass mult takes effect and then scales the reverb decay time for bass frequencies relative to the decay parameter. Okay, um, but all right. Anyway, so um, what I'm assuming is happening here is that uh, this is maybe the crossover point. Um, and if I see a scales and an X here, maybe this means that my decay time will be, if I put this to two, maybe this is like two times four, so eight for the the, the base frequencies. I'm, again, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, I try to do these videos and really understand everything I can about the plugin, but all I have is a video from the team and no documentation and my ears. So I'm doing the best I can. But anyway, let's just move on from the base freak and base melt parameters here. I think we understand what damping does. Um, and let's go over here to shape. Now, shape is uh, a set of parameters to control the simulated size of the room in which the reverb is you know, decaying and moving around and, you know, all that stuff. So if I choose a very large size here, we have a very big room um, for about seven seconds of decay time for the reverb. So let's have a listen to that. If I bring the size all the way down, what do you hear? Well, we're in a much smaller space, so the reverb can't really bloom, but you're also going to get a more metallic kind of sound, right? You hear that ringing? Versus this. An attack is almost like, let's say we're in a big room, right? If I bring this all the way down, this is almost like being really close to the sound source. So we're going to hear the articulation of the crack of that you know, drumstick on the snare. We're going to hear things. Whereas if we go over here, this almost slows down the time, you know, that we're, we're getting that um, a reverb response and we're going all the way to 100%. We're kind of in the far back end of the amphitheater or of the chamber in this case. And we're far away. We're not going to hear the articulation, but we are going to hear a big kind of panoramic space. So if I bring this all the way to 100, listen for the crack of that snare. versus 100. So it's almost doing what the pre-delay was doing and adding a bit of distance between that initial sound source and then the reverb that comes after it. And when we think about doing things to increase intelligibility and all that stuff, you know, you might want to play with attack and make it a little, you know, a little more on the uh, on the lower percentage side to get a bit more articulation out of out of what's going on, but you still want it to be touched or kissed or doused with reverb, right? So you can play with these things to alter the sonic character of of, of the reverb and how it affects your your sound source. So that's kind of cool. Um, moving over here to diffusion. So what this is going to do is give us two different kind of flavors of well reverberation if i bring this all the way these are early reflections by the way and late reflections if i bring this all the way to zero what we're going to get is something close to delay we're almost going to get staggered repeated sounds have a listen so you hear that kind of it like kind of piddles and just like tick, tick, tick. if i bring the decay down we might get a more you know, uh, a better representation of this delay effect. I'm not sure why I'm not really getting the thing I'm looking for. Let me increase the pre-delay, see if that does it. Nope. 
Let's change to another preset. That's another thing that I, another one of my downsides is I would really like to be able to go back to a default setting. I can't figure out how to do it. <laughs> um, and it really drives me crazy. If there were a way to do it, cool. I mean, I could hit default, but watch what happens here when I go to factory default. It defaults to uh, this rich chamber. Let's see if this gives me what I need for my example. There we go. Okay, cool. So this is a, this is a kind of default, but anyway. So now we hear those early reflex, reflections and late reflections kind of staggered and coming back in delay-like sounds. If I bring them up, we get a more unified, uniform bloom of the reverb that we're used to. And of course you can play with this. You can make the early reflections kind of staggered and the late ones more traditional reverb. Or you could do the inverse, right? And have the early reflections more like reverb and late more like, you know, those staccato delays. Totally your choice. So I wanna go to another sound source in this file to uh, in this file in this session to show you what's going on with the next set of parameters. So I have Valhalla here on this organ, which sounds like this. Uh, let me just bypass it. So very, very dry. So I've set my modulation here to be pretty, pretty intense. If I bring the depth all the way down, Listen to it decay. Very kind of normal, expected, but if we change the modulation parameters here, find a kind of area here, find a, a, a you know a rate here that works for you, and then bring up the depth, we get a smearing kind of, I think they describe it as C6 sound. This is almost like how to sound like Boards of Canada um, <laughs> in a couple parameters. So listen to this, 100% depth, 6.29 uh, hertz up here on the rate. compared to this. So if you really want to bring out that kind of vintage, you know, kind of woozy lo-fi vibe, this is a great way to do it. If, if I bring it up even more, I think uh, upper, you know, beyond four, north of four, I think you, you get some really kind of wacky effects. Let me bring this all the way to a uh, hundred. So it's kind of cool. Uh, again, Boards of Canada, very kind of vibe there. Um, and if we go over here to the EQ, I'm gonna go back over to my snare crack example. Um, I have right there, Valhalla Vintage Verb. Um, okay, now it's it's gone back to default, which is crazy. Okay, there's something going on here, but um, we have our EQ section. And this is basically allowing us to protect certain parts of the signal from reverb. So we have our high cut, which if I bring it all the way over here, it sounds like this. All the way up. So you can almost imagine a low pass happening as I bring this all the way down so that I don't allow the high frequencies to be affected by reverb. Let's bring it up. And then you have the inverse here. You have a low cut, so I can protect um, other frequencies in the low end from getting uh, reverb on them. So this is uh, almost imagine an EQ after uh, vintage verb on your kind of plugin chain. That's what's happening here. Um, and the fun thing is we can kind of cancel them out if we go, I think, like this. 
So this is a very tight controlled reverb sound. We're protecting a lot of the uh, frequency from reverb, which is, you know, something you might want to do, you might not. So imagine these as kind of high and low passes protecting uh, the sound from, from vintage verb. So we also have a number of presets over here. Uh, default is not one of them <laughs> as far as I can see. Um, but you know, some designer presets here, I think Don's one of the, one of the guys that I talked to over there. Um, so they're obviously adding presets here all the time, which is great. Um, and I think these guys are ready for, for the M1 chips and the Macs. I'm still on the Intel one. So that is, you know, that's the kind of gist of Valhalla vintage verb. I, I know, a, a, you know, a snare is kind of boring, but it's really the best way to show off how a reverb sounds. If I was to use a vocal or something like that, we would have to wait for the person to stop singing to really understand that tail and hear it and hear how these parameters affect the tail and behavior of, of the reverb. So um, now let's talk about how I feel about this guy with uh, a couple minutes left here. The pros, well, it's cheap. It's 50 bucks, might be a bit more in Canada uh, after the conversion, but when you have stock plugins uh, that sound pretty good, you might wonder why you would spend more than $50 for a third-party reverb. Um, so there you go, 50 bucks, not bad. Another plus is it sounds very good for a character-driven vintage uh, reverb. It's clear that the folks at Valhalla really do love those old reverb units from the 70s and 80s and 90s. I'm not sure what the now means, if that's like 90s or oddies or whatever. It's clear that's that's in the DNA. Um, and so you're not going to get a very subtle reverb with this guy. You're going to get a very affected vintage sound, which is great. Um, I like the amount of controls here. It's not too all over the place. We have a, you know, a couple of potentiometers here, but we could go deeper. I've seen plugins that have even more parameters, uh, to allow you to control things. There's just the right kind of amount. If you are someone who is like coming from stock plugins and you just want to get into something that's colorful and easy to kind of get good sounds with. I do think that the amount of, of pots is is really good. Um, and also it seems to be pretty light on CPU, which is something I know people care about, especially with time-based effects. You know, they want they want something that's not gonna, you know, um, hold them back CPU wise and stuff. So I think this plugin does a really, really good job of that. So as I was saying in the beginning of this video, I do think the adherence to the old world in 2021 is a bit of a weakness for me anyway, just my personal opinion. So the first thing con for me is that I can't sync my pre-delay to the host tempo. And that's something that stock reverb plugins can do. I don't want to go to, I don't want to pull out a calculator and go to a website and plug in the BPM and find like, I just want to, you know, I want my quarter notes and half notes and all that stuff. Um, another downside for me is that there is no parametric EQ. I, all we have are two high and low cuts. And again, this is that I think, you know, the, the developers might say, well, yeah, well, you didn't have a parametric EQ on the, you know, on, on the original units. Well, yeah, you also didn't have three different flavors of reef. Like there are ways that we are kind of like in the future in this plugin, I think with the, with the colors, um, and also, uh, well, I can't really speak to any, any more than that, but I feel like in 2021, I want more control than just two kind of, you know, cuts. I want to be able to dip the mids. I want to be able to maybe, experiment. I want to maybe get access to uh, the modulation and understand, you know, how those are moving around, or maybe I can uh, boost them instead of dip them um, on those EQ bands, you know, when, when the audio is playing, I want more control. And yeah, we didn't have that control in the original units, but I, again, it's 2021. Most plugins now, like a sound toys, they'll have like, it's clear what they're kind of referencing. And then you'll click a little, um, thing to twirl down even deeper modulation controls or EQ controls, which is welcome, I think. Um, there is no documentation. And again, I make these videos and I try to do a really deep dive and understand everything, every little parameter. And if folks are saying like, oh, that doesn't do what Jeff, what you think it does or whatever, there's no way for me to really know and understand everything here about this plugin if there's no documentation. I'm the kind of person who really likes to read the stuff and get it so that I can do a video that's informed and I can't really do that with this plugin. I just have to mouse over and again, use my ears, which I think is awesome. Um, but that's something that um, I really wish uh, they would kind of change. Um, I think I have one more and that's that, again, if all you're gonna give us here is, is high cut and low cut, I would prefer some kind of ducking mechanism and, and you can set this up on your own. It just means that when the dry signal is present, like a vocal, the tail, the decay is suppressed and it kind of comes down so that you get that intelligibility of the dry vocal. And then when it stops, 
when the singer stops singing, um, the bloom recovers, that decay recovers and comes back up. So it's kind of like a ducking and recovering thing. I think they have it in their delay plugin, but again, if all you're going to give us to control uh, the sound is EQ, and you could argue that you know this stuff also alters the, the tonality to give you some articulation or whatever, like at least give us a little button that says ducking with a couple of parameters to control the recovery and suppression of the reverb tail. But again, they might be like, you didn't have that on the old units. And yeah, I get it. I get it. Got it. So anyway, um, but what do you guys think? Do you have this? Are you thinking about getting it? Have you seen it everywhere? And you've kind of wondered, well, maybe I should get it too. I really want to know if this video moved the needle or changed your attitude or behavior at all, um, or if it helped kind of get you thinking about what some of the parameters that you maybe didn't know, you know, what they did. Now you do know what they did. So I'd love to hear from you. Really, I read every comment, podcast, podcaster at gmail.com. Um, overall, for 50 bucks, I think this is a really great tool to have, especially if you're thinking about graduating from stock plugins um, and you want to get into reverbs. And again, all of my cons, again, you could just put an EQ after the reverb, a stock EQ, and then you have your parametric EQ. If you want to do ducking, a lot of people complain about this, but you can set it up with compressors. It's pretty easy to do, just YouTube you know, ducking or whatever. And you'll, you'll find some videos for that documentation, not really a con, uh, but for me a little bit. So all of my cons are pretty manageable, I think. Um, but anyway, I do want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Thank you. And, uh, have a great life. Goodbye.